Hey everybody, it's Dean Guccione for Tomorrow's Firefighter, and I've created this video training series to help you significantly improve your firefighter panel interview score. So without further ado, let's get right into this week's topic. Yeah, so it's about being ready for any, any question in your interview. Now, um, as you know, uh, there, there could be hundreds of, of questions that you, ha that you have to be prepared for, and you cannot be prepared for every single question. But what you can do is you can put together responses that you've practiced for certain questions and you can kind of synthesize those kind of on the fly because if you know yourself really well and you're very well prepared for the situational questions, then you're gonna be able to, to give a good response to a question that you haven't prepared for. So, uh, so I'm gonna start out, the first question I'm gonna discuss and talk about is a question that, that may come up that they may ask you to discuss a time in a previous job when you were asked to do something that you did not agree with. And, and that's kind of an unusual question. This, this question gets asked a lot in promotional interviews for captain and lieutenant and those types of positions in the fire department. But occasionally these, uh, these, this type of question gets asked in an entry level interview. And so what, what I want you to do is think about any kind of job, you know, it, no matter what job that you've had, what experience that you've had, I promise you there's a time and you may have to dig down deep and really remember, but there is a time when you are asked to do something that you did not agree to. And how I want you to answer this question is simply that you've got to do whatever it is that you're asked to do, especially in a, in a current job, because you guys aren't on the fire department yet, all right? And there's gonna be times when you're asked on the fire department, hey, to do things that, that you may not agree with. And the underlying concept of this is, you may not agree with something, but you don't have all of the information of why you're being asked to do something, all right? So unless it's something that is going to immediately danger you or harm you, which this isn't the case, this is just simply you not agreeing with something that you're asked to do. All right. And so, so I'm going to kind of go through a, a little thing that I want you guys to think about in your current jobs, whether you're working for a private ambulance company or, or wherever you're working, you might even be working as a server somewhere and all of that. And and what I want you to think about is you guys are, you know, whoever you are, you're, you know, you're Michael, you're Alejandro, you're, uh, and you're, you're Christian, and you are, are Michael Incorporated, okay? I want you to think about yourself as, uh, as kind of like a corporation or your own business, and it's your job to really create the reputation about who you are that you want to create okay and that's why i say michael incorporated alejandro incorporated christian incorporated okay so even though you may not agree with something that you're asked to do i ask you to do that work no matter what it is because you're an employee at a company you're an employee with a fire department all right and you're getting a paycheck to do whatever it is that your job responsibilities are and even though you may not agree with it, I would go, I would happily do that because I'm getting a paycheck to do my job and that could incorporate a whole bunch of different tasks, responsibilities and, and whatnot. So that's how I want you to look at your current job and I want you to look at the job going into the fire service, all right? And because, let me kind of give you an example and, I, and maybe this will trigger an example in your guys' previous job experience that can help you answer this question and really and come up with an example that's something you didn't agree with. I, let's say that, uh, and I'll just, I'll do it uh, for the fire service because it's a, it's an easy thing to do. Let's say that the, the locker room is kind of a mess. All right. And you didn't make the mess, but your captain goes, Hey, go clean the locker room. And you're like, crap, man, why, why am I doing this? And you're thinking that to yourself. And it's like, why, does, why don't other guys pick up after themselves and all that? And it's like, you know what? I'd say, I'm happy to go clean the locker room. Absolutely, Cap. Whatever you, know, whatever you need. And boom, go in there and then do a kick-ass job. Because, look, you're, again, you're getting paid to do a job. And there's disadvantages and advantages to every job. And there's certainly disadvantages to being 
a firefighter, okay? And one of those disadvantages is you're gonna have to be working on holidays, you're gonna be missing birthdays, and you're gonna be missing anniversaries and special occasions with your family or your kids if you have one, if you have kids, or um, eventually uh, if you decide to have kids and have a family and all that kind of stuff. And one of the things that kind of sucks is scrubbing toilets. But you know what? I would scrub toilets all day long to be a firefighter because being in that position isn't going to last forever. You're going to move up the, the chain. You're going to get more seniority. You're going to move, move up in rank. You're going to promote and all those things. And you're not going to have to do that forever. So, uh, so again, I mean, wow, I would do anything in the world to be a firefighter. And I want you to kind of carry that attitude over into your current job. And, and, you know, your, your supervisor asks you, you know, and, hey, Michael, would you do this or, or do that, whatever? And I would say, absolutely. And then go do a kick-ass job in whatever it is they ask you to do, even if you disagree with what it is. Because, again, you may not have all the information. Your supervisor has a lot more information that a lot of times you're not privy to. And either they can't discuss certain things with you or they just don't have time to, to give you all the whys of why you're doing things, okay? So again, unless it's something that is gonna put you in danger or, or be a safety concern, then I'll go back to your, to your supervisor and say, hey, this, this doesn't look safe or this isn't safe because of this or that. And then let them make the decision because they have more experience in, than you do, okay? And that holds true in the fire service and in your current job. Again, because you don't have the information that they do and be, just because you disagree with it doesn't make it wrong, all right? You, you just may have a personal disagree with it, disagreement with that. But I encourage you because fire departments, especially during the background, they're going to go talk to your previous employer and they're going to ask, what kind of employee was Michael? What kind of employee was Alejandro? What kind of employee was Christian? And when your supervisor goes and say, holy cow, Michael did everything in this job that I asked him to do, no questions asked, and he did it with a smile on his face and a great attitude, and you're lucky to get this guy on your fire department. So that's the kind of thinking that I want you guys to be in, the kind of mindset that you want to be in. You know, if, I mean, if we all had, if we never had to work, that would be the ultimate thing, but we do have to work to pay our bills and to support our families and all those different things, right? So... Um, you've got to be the best person that you can be right now in your current job. Um, and hopefully you're the best person you could be in a previous job that you had. But at least start today with that mindset of Michael Incorporated with Alejandro Incorporated and build your reputation to be the best it can be because those fire departments are going to be talking to your previous employers to see the type of employee that you were. So uh, so again, if you need help with that, you know, shoot me an email, go, hey, Dean, this is kind of the situation I was thinking about, about something I didn't agree with, and then kind of give me a little backstory on it, and, and I can help you, uh, you know, help you formulate an answer around that, okay? But, but this isn't really that difficult of a question. I just want you to be in the right mindset, because this is a, a negative thing, and every response that you give in your interview especially when there's negative questions being asked, you've got to turn it around into a positive, all right? And you turn it around into a positive because anybody could say, oh yeah, I would, you know, even though I disagree with it, yeah, I, I would do it, whatever. But they're asking you for an example. They want to see that you've experienced this and that you did the right thing within this experience that you had. And the right thing is you're being paid to do a job for an employer. And it's and then on top of that, it's your job to, to make your employer's life or your boss's life as easy as possible. And that's by doing a great job and being a good employee because again, you're getting a paycheck. I see there's so many people in, in different businesses and they're employees for different businesses. And I talk to a lot of different supervisors and a lot of different CEOs and bosses and managers and you know, they have a lot of pressure from them, from their bosses, because everybody has a boss, okay? Even, um, in, so I'm going to compare, you know, private sector to the fire service. In private sector, everybody has a boss. Even the owner of a small business, they have a boss, and, and that is, you know, what they're trying to do. They, they're held accountable by their customers, all right? They have a boss, and ultimately the, the customers are their boss. 
in, in a bigger corporation where there's a CEO. That CEO has a boss and that's the board members. And those board members hold that CEO accountable. And then that CEO, their other secondary boss, well actually it's their primary boss, is the customers again themselves. So everybody is held accountable in any type of business or organization, ultimately by the people that they serve, all right? So let's, let's shift to the fire service. Everybody is held accountable. As a firefighter, you're held accountable by your supervisor, which is your lieutenant or captain. And those lieutenants and captains are held accountable by their battalion chiefs. And the battalion chiefs are held accountable by the division chiefs. And the division chiefs are held accountable by the assistant chiefs. The assistant chiefs are held accountable by the deputy chief. And the deputy chief is held accountable by the fire chief. And the fire chief is held accountable by the city manager, all right? And the city manager, is held accountable by the city council, the elected officials who are the people, right? The people who elect those officials to oversee the city government and how it runs. So ultimately, it goes back to the citizens in a city organization and the fire service, all right? So everyone is held accountable. And the easier you make your boss's job, then the, the better employee you're going to be. And, and, the, and I tell you, the, the much happier you're going to be going in with a good attitude um, and be willing to do whatever it is that you're asked. And trust me, when you're that kind of person who's cooperative and you're not just bucking the system and disagreeing all the time and being negative all the time and questioning every single little thing, that is a nightmare to your boss. Okay. So the more cooperative you are and the more willing you are to do a great job, that's not only going to help you get hired because when they do, again, when they do your background, they're going to say, yeah, and Alejandro, Michael, Christy, you guys were great employees. And that then they're going to come back and go, wow, we need this guy. We want this guy because of his work ethic, his attitude, willingness to, to do whatever's asked of him, cooperative, works well with other people, doesn't get in, in conflicts and, and arguments with people all the time, all right? It's all about cooperation and working together as a team to accomplish the mission of the organization, whether it's in your current job or the fire department that you get hired from. So I hope all that kind of makes sense and that kind of gives you an idea how to approach this question and why. So you need to give an example. So you got, and, and I, I really want to stress to, to really answer the question here. So there's, uh, so there's two things here. The, the overall thing is, is dealing with, with doing something you're asked that you weren't, that you did not agree on. And then secondly is giving that example, right? So giving that personal experience. And so they, so the interview panel sees that you understand what the question is and that you handled that situation the right way. And what I just discussed is how you handle that the right way. And again, you're going to create bullet points for this. So you can discuss this within a two to two and a half minute. Uh, response and then practice that okay and when you start kind of practicing these kind of odd questions that are out of the norm that'll be another tool in your toolbox up in your rolodex right when you get asked a question you're like you flip to that rolodex that that little card in that rolodex in your brain that you've been preparing for and then you're able to get that response or being able to, to put several answers together to answer a question like this that maybe you haven't prepared for right I hope that information was helpful for you. And if you liked it, leave a comment down below. If you didn't like it, leave a comment as well. Either way, I'd like to hear your feedback on what you thought about this. And if you'd like to learn more and get more detailed information on how you can significantly improve your firefighter interview score, put your name and email address in the link below and sign up for my free video training series that's much more comprehensive than these little shorter videos. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you soon.